Good morning, Mountaineers! I am so excited to see you, and I'm even more excited about our series for the month of August. Well, check it out. Bishop is going to be preaching a series called Minding Your Business, and he's going to be talking about mental health. Well, when I think about the word mental, I think about my mind, all right? Because me and my mental state, it has to do with, you know, I'm feeling in my mind. And so, what we're going to do Minding my emotions, all right? Or mind your emotions. Let's say mind your emotions. Mind my emotions. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the letters in the word mind to give us some strategies for how we can mind our emotions in a way that is pleasing to Christ. So if I spell mind, it's M-I-N-D, all right? So end of this series, I want you to be able to tell me the words for M-I-N-D. Alright, so what we're going to do today is I want you to check out this experiment. So I have this pink cup here and it's filled with some warm water. And then what I'm going to do is this water represents us. So it represents you, it represents me. Alright, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some red Feel free to replay this and try this at home, but make sure you ask your parents because I don't want to get any colors everywhere. And notice I have a fan. I'm going to find out why this is a fan. Alright, so this cool coloring is going to represent our feelings like being angry or maybe being frustrated. Alright, so we add a few drops. That's besides the point. All right, so water is us. Food coloring is our feelings like these are All right, then I'm going to add in some dish soap. Okay. okay. I'm going to give it a little stir. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I'm going to give it a little stir. All right, so, and now I'm going to add some baking soda. So what does the baking soda represent? The baking soda represents self-control, all right? And so I'm going to know that the baking soda represents all right? Of us not managing our emotions properly. Alright, now we're going to watch what happens when I pour in some vinegar, which represents self-control. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh! Did you see that? Oh my gosh, it went overflowing. It went overflowing! Listen, if we don't learn to manage our emotions, then we're going to risk them overflowing or us losing control of our actions, which could lead to us sinning, which is anything we do against God. All right, so keep that in mind, and we're gonna go a little bit deeper because this month we're going to look at a Bible hero, all right? Um, you may know this Bible hero. He was given the Ten Commandments. He parted the Red Sea. Just yell out who you think it is. Did you yell out no one? It's not you. Did you yell out Joseph? Did you yell out Joshua? It's not him either, but this man is connected to Joshua. It's Moses! So if you yelled out Moses at home, awesome job. All right, so Moses had some anger issues. All right, and he's gonna show us some things we shouldn't do, maybe something we should do, so we can manage our emotions a little bit better. All right, so let's look at a few instances when he didn't manage his emotions well. As I read, I want you to think about what happened. And I want you to think about how Moses could have managed his anger better. So we're in Exodus 2, verses 11 through 12. Moses escaped Midian. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went to visit his own people. 
the Hebrews. And he saw how hard they were forced to work. The Hebrews had become slaves to the Egyptians. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. So imagine you saw somebody beating up your little brother or your little sister. What would you do? Imagine you saw someone beating up your best friend. What would you do? After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian. Yep, you're really right. He killed the man. He murdered the man. And he hid his body in the sand. Now, Moses, he killed somebody because he was not happy with how they were treating his people. But how do you think Moses could have managed his anger better. Maybe he could have went up to the man and said, hey, I don't like the way you beating up that person. Can you stop? Maybe he could have went up to him and said, why are you beating up this person? This is not right. Did he just have to beat the person? I mean, clearly he did not manage his emotions well. And it caused him to sin because he killed somebody. Remember this overflowing experiment? That anger is overflowing. Did he need us to so we have to be able to manage it. Now, check this out. Exodus 32, 19. When they came near the camp, Moses saw the cat and the dance, and he burned with anger. He threw the stone tablets to the ground, smashing them at the foot of the mountain. So listen up. Let me give you a little backstory. So what happened is Moses went up to the mountain to talk to the Lord, get some instructions from the Lord. And while he was up there, the people decided, hey, Moses is gone. We don't have anybody to lead us. We're not feeling the Lord. So we need some gods. So they made this golden calf, which is an idol because God is supposed to be number one in our lives. So they disobeyed one of the commandments. And when I tell you Moses was mad, he was mad. He was so mad, he threw those tablets with the Ten Commandments down on the ground. Do you think that was the best way for Moses to manage his emotions? Was that the best way for him to manage his anger? What do you think Moses could have done a little bit better? Maybe he could have set those stone tablets down. And maybe he could have asked those people, why did you all feel the need to build this cabin? Like, could you have talked to the Lord and asked the Lord for some help? Just maybe. All right? Now, there is a time that Moses managed his emotions well. Check it out. Exodus 2, 15 through 17. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what happened. And so, because Pharaoh had heard about what Moses killed that person, you know, that first story I told you about, they decided that they were going to look for Moses. So, when Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a way he was going to and while he was by that well, the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to get water and fill their water troughs for their father's flock. But some other shepherds, these other men, these other dudes, these other leaders, they came and they chased the women away. So Moses, he jumped up and he rescued the girls from the shepherds. Not only did he rescue them from these men, he also drew some water for their flocks. This time, he did that with managing his emotions because he didn't end up taking anyone's life. He didn't throw anything down and break it. But I wonder what he did. The Bible doesn't go into detail, but it does allow me to be proud that he managed his emotions better. And guess what we can do? We can manage our emotions by stopping, by praying. God walking away, or informing someone. Because guess what? We might not know how to do it. So sometimes we might have to ask for some help. So let's think back to our experience. Remember, it overflows. Remember, the water represents us. And then we put the food coloring in, which represents our feelings. Then we added some dish soap and some baking soap. The baking soap was the consequence not managing our feelings properly. And then when I pour some vinegar into it, it just goes Because guess what? That can happen if we don't manage our emotions well. So I want you to repeat after me. I will manage my emotions. Let me hear you say it. 
awesome job. Now, get up, get ready to do these motions with it. So I will manage my emotions. Check you out later. Bye-bye.